Good morning. We're here for the Marion County Weekly Board of Commissioners meeting. It's Wednesday, October 19th, 2016. And we're here in the Senator hearing room at Courthouse Square, 555 Court Street Northeast. And if you will join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We get a little break in the rain this morning so far. That's a good thing. And uh, I, was, I saw on the news that we were uh, like close to breaking a record for October. It, 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 we potentially could break a record. So we've got somebody, a guest here that signed up for a public comment. Just like to invite uh, Irena, Irena, Irena Kupchuk, uh, who is visiting us from, um, I think it was from the Ukraine, right? You want to come up and say hello, and, and uh, Kenna West is with us this morning from the board office to uh, share a little bit about your visit. Welcome. I know I surprised you by asking you to do this, but uh, we'd love uh, to. Hello, everyone. It yeah. is very nice to meet you. My name is in Ukrainian. It's called Irina Kupchuk. Uh, I'm representative of Ukraine. I work at Ukraine as an assistant of the member of parliament. Uh, we work at the committee on budget. Uh, my main obligations are to work with amendments to laws. We do some conclusions to laws. We write bills. Uh, we do amendments uh, to the budget code and uh, to the uh, law on budget uh, for each year. And now it is a very hot budget period in Ukraine. And I guess in two days, uh, the Parliament of Ukraine will vote for the law in first reading. It's like the first part of the procedure of the law of the state. Um, and um, uh, here I am uh, on the program, Professional Fellows Program. It is uh, funded by the uh, State Department, Bureau on Education and Culture Affairs. Uh, in Salem, I am for a month. And my main workplace is in City Hall uh, Department on Budget and Finance. But I am interested to study about different organizations of the United States. Uh, and I uh, will be really happy to transform some progressive experience in Ukraine in my country. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Kenna? you very much. And, yes. Um, Irina is extremely accomplished. She is a lawyer and assistant counsel parliament. We're very fortunate to have her just this morning. She'll be spending some time uh, downstairs with, or excuse me, upstairs with finance, learning about our budgeting and finance uh, here at the county. So we just have her this morning and we thought we'd introduce her. Well, Commissioner Cameron thought we should introduce her to you all. Yes. Any questions or? Well, lots, but I don't know where to start. If I heard you right, you're working on different laws. Is there anything in particular that you really are advocating for or would like to see happen? Um, you know, uh, now we are lucky to, we are fighting in Ukraine to make our budget process more transparent and uh, everything which is going on more open to the public. And the last stages, what, um, and what the, the bill we are working on, uh, which we don't have in Ukraine yet, it's uh, the law on lobbyism. We don't have it in Ukraine. Uh, we know that a lot of deputies, members of parliament, advocating for different things, but it is not any way officially um, stated in the law. And I know that uh, in the United States uh, there is like regulations uh, and the rules how certain questions should be um, protected and represented it to the public. So the public could check uh, the certain uh, person and uh, wh which connections he has, what he could protect, so he could understand the reason why the person could uh, represent certain question. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Well, have fun with our finance department. And I'm, I, if you haven't heard, they've gotten uh, awards year after year for their budgeting process here in Marion County. They're uh, yes, excellent uh, at what they do. We're proud um, to have them. A committee on budget usually um, 
the government um, represent to the members of parliament and to the public the bill on budget to the 13th year. And lately, uh, this uh, bill, it's um, not the ready document, but just uh, like uh, the bill, it goes to the committee on budget. And we have a lot of committees, a uh, lot of meetings with uh, representatives from ministers and other main institutions, which explains to the members on the committee on budget why they need certain sum of money. They bring um, documents where uh, um, explanation why this why they need this sum of money, not more and not less. But as you can imagine, a lot of um, uh, representatives of ministers want uh, they ask for a great sum of money, and we have uh, the limited budget. So lately, it is a question for the members of parliament and for the government to decide what sphere is a priority for this certain year and um, why we should invest more money to this certain sphere, not for other. Now in Ukraine, it is very, we have like three priorities. First one is um, Ministry of Defense, as you could, couldn't know that we have a war conflict in the eastern Ukraine. Um, so we really have to invest a lot of money to the this sphere. The next one, uh, in uh, roads, we have um, a not great in road infrastructure in Ukraine. A lot of them are in bad condition. So we are trying to uh, allocate funds to make them better, as a lot of people struggle from the poor quality of the roads. And one more is social sphere. sphere as um, we have, we are now at the moment of uh, uh, transforming uh, the um, um, pension fund. Yeah, so these three <laughs> points, I guess, are the main for this year. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for sharing with us. Really thank appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, commissioners. Glori Gloria? Um, and if she has time, feel free to um, introduce her to the lawyers in my office, because, uh, you know, we kind of have the public meetings, public records. Kenny's on the uh, Ethics Commission, which deals with lobbying regulations. And okay. It might be interesting if you have time to, to talk to some of them. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I'll thank try you, and get her there. Okay, thank you. All right, so we will go right into our consent. Nobody else signed up for public comment, so we'll go into the consent calendar. And I, uh, I believe it was your short term. <laughs> short term, what are you saying? Uh, Chair Cameron, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar this morning. On it, we have business, uh, under business services, we approve a recommendation to adjust upward salary ranges for public health nurse okay. one, number 506, public health nurse two, number 511, public health, health nurse three, number 512, and Chief Administrative Officer number 094, and approve a recommendation to adopt and establish the classification Juvenile Probation Case Aid number 164. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent calendar, say aye. 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 Okay, move on to our first action item. Today is from Business Services. Consider approval of a public improvement agreement with k &E Excavation Corporation for the amount of $125,315 to pave the jail campus parking lot and various ADA ramps. And Colleen is here to give us the details. I think this is pretty straightforward. We have a, a handout that was given to us as well, showing where. Good morning, Commissioners. Colleen Coons Chapin's Business Services Director, and I brought Larry Tilford, whose project this is. So he's going to talk to us a little bit about it. Okay, Larry, welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. We've been pretty excited about this process. It's been in the works for a little over two years. And it was particularly highlighted when we did the bus stop uh, change and renovation over at the jail campus. Um, at the time, we, we really were focused on how badly the paving uh, in the drive into the jail and the parking lots 
uh, was alligator, alligatoring, it's called, with all the fisher, fissures and cracks in the paving. So this proposal uh, takes a stab at, re at resurfacing the paving that is at its worst. Um, as you can see from the diagram we passed out, it's primarily in front of the jail in the parking area uh, right adjacent to the flagpole uh, where it has not only cracked but also sunk uh, because the underlayment is, is insufficient. And so this process is, is uh, an attempt to um, replace and, and repave those areas that are highlighted uh, and it's going to take place over a couple of weeks period and we'll also be adding ADA ramps in that are required by code. Just wanted to note too that this is phase one. There will be a phase two when the new campus is completed and we'll finish that. This does not impact the construction at this point nor will the construction be going on this road at that juncture. Commissioner? I may be going to ask the same question. We, we have a map, no color code, so perhaps it's just the blue portion we're doing now. If you look or, at the backside, the, oh, backside Commissioner, it talks about go. phasing. But, okay, still all the area colored is part of this project? That's correct. So it isn't really a rebuild. It is just topping off and are you expecting that to hold up over time? And, and there, what is, was there, is, oh. there is excavation involved as well. Oh, there um, is. Yes. Base Seems like 125,000 is going a long ways here then. No? Uh, th there's another way to go, <laughs> but this, this gets us through at least half and the next phase will come next year. All right. I think it's about half. Yes. It's about half. Yeah. Well, I, I just to follow up on, uh, commissioner's question. So, so we're getting all this highlighted here in this contract. Yes, sir. Yes. I'd agree. That is okay. And then the other question I had was that obviously the, the, uh, sheriff and jail operations because the intake is right is right off of that that driveway they're going to be have an alternative way to get in during the construction that's already been dealt with it has already been discussed with the uh, jail commander and they've already identified some temporary parking locations to move their vehicles to okay so uh any uh i, I do have questions? one more just so i know um so now I see the color code, but they really say the same thing. So what is the distinction between each of these areas that you've segmented? The, the colors are just really a priority uh, listing, Commissioner. So which, which of the map is taken first? It's okay. a phased approach. All right. Thank you. Okay. Ready for a motion? Sure. And I just want to say that I've been out there and I have personally witnessed the, yeah. <laughs> the problems with the parking lot, so I'm certainly in favor of us taking care of this. So, uh, the, the dollars are coming from where? It's Did a CIP. Capital so it's actually fund. in the capital improvement, capital improvement plan. So it was something that was planned. Correct. Yes. All right. So we're just do, the doing the, actually the agreement now for, and, the, for the company. Okay. And actually the, the capital improvement plan was approved for $151,000. So we're, we're coming in under budget. Oh, so. well, that's even better. <laughs> All right, so I'll move that uh, the board approve the public improvement agreement with KE Excavating Incorporated for 125.315 to pave the jail campus parking lot and various ADA ramps. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next action item is the district attorney's office and we have some other partners that are with us today to consider approval of a proclamation design designating the month of October as domestic violence awareness month in Marion County. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Members of the board, uh, I'm Walt Beglaw. I have the privilege of uh, serving as the uh, district attorney here in Marin County, and we are again pleased to, to be back in front of you, um, acknowledging and having some dialogue around uh, National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And uh, we've this uh, our team here, a wonderful team here. Um, uh, Kim Larson from our uh, director of our victim assistance and uh, program here in the district attorney's office and of course 
Jane Downing from the Center for Hope and Safety. We're, uh, we work together around this uh, during this month and year round, and uh, we've had some great uh, things come forward uh, over the last year or so in terms of our effort as a community. I, um, I want to start with something really encouraging um, for you. Last night I seized uh, the opportunity to um, go over to Willamette University and uh, uh, we had a little panel, uh, Willow, um, from our program and victim assistance. There was a professor uh, over there that joined us as a panel and we had about 20, 25 students that came just to come talk with us. And before I even got in the door, they pulled out a list of questions that they had for us, and it was endless. And their questions were endless. And I, I just um, was encouraged by the fact that they were asking all the right questions. And that they, uh, it just struck me that uh, as we try and get out and, and build community awareness, uh, that the, our agents for change were sitting right in front of us. Um, and they were asking, what can I specifically do if I have a friend or a family member? What should I be looking for? What are those signs that something might be off in a relationship? And we were able to answer that for them. And then they asked questions, well, do you have all the right tools? I mean, is there anything we can do at the legislature? Do we need to hone and fine tune our laws? And we talked through that. They talk about the greater public awareness that needs to, rather than just a discussion, what action steps can we to get to a point where we have to acknowledge that domestic violence is prevalent, it's persistent, and it's, it, it is destroying families, not only in this community, but across this nation. And that won't be tolerated anymore. Um, and then we talked a lot about community. and. They, it reminded me that we have so many different communities. They talked about the campus community. They talked about different congregations and how these discussions need to take place. They talked about, we talked about cities and how domestic violence impacts cities and, and across, um, across our state. So um, all in the effort to make sure that we have safe options for uh, survivors of domestic violence and accountability within our system. So <coughs> I, just, I just felt encouraged. and. Um, uh, that, that is our primary goal this year, is, is continuing to, to get beyond just the fact that this is a family problem, because it, it's not, it's a community problem. So I'm going to um, shift gears and, and uh, let Kim and Jane uh, share a few things uh, with you. And of course, every year we're, we love to uh, field any um, questions or input that you have. I, I, year after year, I know we, we do this. Uh, but I just have I, I, this genuine commitment from the board and our leadership here around domestic violence, and it helps us do our job so much more effectively. So thanks for that as I turn it over to Kim. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to just kind of dovetail off of what Walt's talked about. I think we often, when we're talking about domestic violence and the issues that we're seeing in our community, it can be pretty discouraging sometimes to see what we're seeing and to uh, work with folks who are experiencing what they're experiencing. But I think we'd like to communicate that there is hope in this work. And some of the things Walt has talked about reflect that. What we're seeing is also an effort in our community for people to really step in and speak up and to offer to help. And there's a role for everyone in our community in doing that. I think that a lot of the efforts that we're going to be making in the next year for our Domestic Violence Council will focus on reaching out into the community to talk about what is it that people can do. I think a lot of times people don't know what they can do when they see or hear things. And so helping people understand that they can do something, whether it's offering to help the victim that they may be seeing, whether it's calling someone who might be appropriate, whether it's law enforcement or probation department if they know someone's on probation, to really kind of highlight things that they're seeing so that action can be taken. Another way people can step in and help is volunteering. Both Victim Assistance Program and the Center for Hope and Safety use volunteers. We have fantastic community volunteers, and they help us reach into our community to make a difference <coughs> for uh, the victims that we're serving. And so I think that's the message we'd like to give, is that there is hope, and there is the ability to make a difference, and we all have a role in that. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come forward. 
Um, one of the things um, that Walt and Kim talked about is um, the great community partnerships. And one of the ways that I've been excited this year about that um, is that for the very first time, thanks to some of the justice reinvestment dollars that the county um, put aside for victim services, um, our office is actually, our two offices are sharing an advocate who is in the courtroom, excuse me, every single day, <coughs> excuse me, providing services around um, protection orders. Um, we now have the ability to do video conferencing for victims that don't feel safe in the courtroom. And um, that advocate that's been trained by both of our offices um, is available and actually goes back and forth between the offices. That's been a dream of ours for um, as long as I can remember. I think since both of us have been uh, long-term directors, we've been talking about being able to do that. And so that's been a really exciting um, thing that's happened just in this last year. For our program, um, since we moved to our new advocacy office on Center Street, we doubled in the first year the number of people walking through our doors, and we um, actually doubled the second year again. And so knowing that being downtown in this area has made a huge difference for people coming in and get, getting services. Um, we've also been in a, a kind of quiet campaign to raise funds to be able to open a new shelter. Our shelter, after 37 years, is um, and almost 16,000 um, adults and children is worn out. And um, we actually just finished raising all the funds that we need in order to be able to open that. So we're actually hoping by the first of the year we will have a new shelter operating in our community providing services. And then um, we're actually planning for some longer range, or range plans where we can help folks move from crisis into more stable um, housing. And so you have lots of exciting things going on in our community. As always, we would love to be coming up to you and saying, actually, we're closing our programs down, all three of them, because there's no need. Um, our community is safe for everyone, and we have the ability to um, not have, need, have a need for our services. That's not the reality right now. Um, unfortunately, we've had uh, someone who was just murdered um, in the last month in our community due to domestic violence. And, and what you see here is a partnership, a community partnership <clears throat> that's committed to, and that's law enforcement, parole and probation, all the folks that were mentioned, uh, a partnership of saying that's not okay in our community and we wanna try to address it. And so we appreciate your leadership in saying, making this public statement of, it's not okay that this is happening in our community and that we stand together to say, um, let's try to have a community where this will never be a reality for someone in the future. So thank you for your efforts and thank you for your support in, um, in uh, helping us to be able to do what we do every day. I want to just uh, say um, thank you to Commissioner Carlson and to, to the three of you and the, and the work that you've done in the last year um, when the audit and the, the assessment that we had done and some of the changes that have been made, some I think what you just spoke of as a result of that and the 3194 money um, that's been set aside at the state and at the county for, um, for victims is really, it is making a difference and uh, it'll, it will um, pay off in the long run. But thank you for your leadership uh, and pulling people together to make a difference in our community. You wanna make any? Sure, I have like comments. a whole long list. I, well, <laughs> I I'll, I'll, I'll right just ahead. have a short list. All right. Well, just first of all, thank you for being here and bringing this forward as we do this every year, and it's just such a critical issue. And uh, Jane and I actually had a chance to be in the same room with a presentation Monday evening to the Mid-Willamette Homeless Initiative. She did, as usual, a very excellent job. And, um, and it was interesting for me to hear her comments with regard to homelessness, which is another community issue. Uh, and while we talk about shelters and transitional housing and things for uh, people who are victims of domestic violence, it was uh, enlightening for me, I guess, to hear how it connects in with all of the other populations with homelessness, particularly around the idea that if the community chooses to say, uh, we're gonna work on the chronically homeless uh, for our target population, that it squeezes out 
other populations that are looking for housing, particularly this in this environment when housing is so scarce. So that was uh, a really good uh, point to make, and I think we need to take that into consideration as we move forward. I, I also wanted to uh, tag on to what Commissioner Cameron said that we, through the Public Safety Coordinating Council and uh, Jane and Walt both serve <coughs> on that, uh, the Justice Reinvestment Initiative, which the legislature approved two years ago, four years ago, uh, right, four years ago, next year, <laughs> three years ago, okay, anyway, whatever. Um, that uh, there were some, well, there was some funding that came with that, and in this last year, the public safety councils were asked to come up with a plan. And in uh, creating that plan, 10% uh, of the dollars by law and by administrative rule are supposed to go to victims of crime. And uh, I thought I had a pretty good grounding in what our services were here. I mean, I've known Jane for years and years and years. I've been a county commissioner now, and I'm almost finishing my 14th year, so. I mean, it's, it's been a long time, but, and so I've known Wall, I've known Kim, I've been through the services, but uh, really learned a lot working with them this year about not only what the services are, you know, advocacy services and safety plans and shelter services and uh, working with victims uh, generally, but also how the services work together and uh, what the different options are for people and, uh, and also what kinds of innovations we could do to strengthen our system. And I think that I'm just so um, proud to work in a community where we have such great collaboration and people that are so willing to say, well, let's take a look at that. And maybe there are things that w have been on our wish list that now the time is right to do them. And so uh, through the money with Justice Reinvestment, and Jane talked about this advocate that we were able to get for them, a couple advocates, right? One was the bilingual and the other was the children's advocate. Uh, and those, and then ha uh, connecting that with the, with the court system and restraining orders, this new idea that children uh, can come into court with their parents, right? And there's kind of a childcare thing that we're talking about doing and a place where victims can testify if they need to be separated from uh, their perpetrators in court. Uh, I mean, these are all really great things that are enhancing the already really outstanding services that we have. And the last thing I would say is that uh, it is so important for the community to really understand this issue. And I think that's your focus is that this is not just for people who are involved in the issue, but it's, it's really, it touches all of us. It, it, it harms our community when these types of things are allowed to happen within our community, and particularly if we just turn a blind eye and don't respond or don't get involved. Um, and a couple things that the county is doing this year, one is that we have, uh, all four of us attended a conference in uh, San Diego earlier this year where we heard a couple speakers, <coughs> and one is Dr. Vincent Felitti, who uh, talks about the ACES study, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and the connection that those experiences have to uh, health problems, not just mental health and emotional problems, but physical health problems. And uh, just fascinating, very powerful presentation. And so uh, Faye Fagel, our juvenile director, has taken the lead in inviting him to come up to Oregon. We have a community event that's on November the 1st. And uh, the community services department is organizing that. I heard at I think it was last week that we had 500 people signed up for this thing. So, yeah, so it's going to, so you've got to get your tickets if you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't signed up already. And uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, and it's on my birthday, so it's, I'm, I invited my husband. He's going to come with, too. I said, this is my birthday present. You can come with me in here, Dr. Vincent Felitti. Uh, and then the other one that's happening in January with our Together Towards Tomorrow event that we do every year is Chan Hellman, who is uh, from University of Oklahoma. And he talks about, well, he actually has done research on hope and created these HOPE surveys that we're working on implementing in Marion County. And uh, just was such a groundbreaking type of research to help us, how do you measure increases in HOPE because so much of what you do is to give people hope as you describe. So I told you I had a lot to say, but uh, thank you again for being here and uh, for raising all of the issues and doing the work that you do in our community. Well, I should never follow her. <laughs> Let's just be serious.
but uh, some comments are going to be a bit repetitive, but just, just so I've discussed it. Uh, prior to the meeting, Jane and I were talking, and she commented how she's busier than ever. Um, but it's because people are more aware, maybe a community non-tolerance for these activities, access and facilities, you've talked about that. So uh, I would like to kind of know, in spite of those good things, is it getting better? Are we making progress uh, in terms of numbers? Are we just more aware there will always be more cases? Um, give, give me something bright. So um, whenever you address uh, an issue like uh, domestic violence, what I can tell you is that you actually want the numbers to go up before you ever see them go down. Because if you don't, what it means is you actually have not done a good job of creating that community awareness. And so it's one of those things where if your goal is ultimately to have less domestic violence, you need a period of time where it seems like that, it, it, that the numbers kind of skyrocket. And what that means is you have everyone in the community talking about the subject. And, and we've had a lot of attention to domestic violence. And what we know is every time it's in the newspaper, every time, unfortunately, there's a domestic violence homicide, the numbers to our crisis line will actually go up. The number of people coming to see us will go up. I'm sure that's true for the other offices, too. And what that does is people start thinking about it and saying, you know what? I, I can come forward. I can talk to someone. I'm not the only one that's going through this. And that's a big part of domestic violence is that isolation and feeling as though you're the only one and that other people won't understand. And so every time we create an environment which from the outside looks like, wow, this seems to be a, a much bigger problem than it did before, actually what you've done is you've taken a step towards ultimately being able to have it go down because people know they can get help they know they're going to get supported through the system they know that that there is a place they can turn to that will help them through that process and he, we're lucky in marion county to have lots of different ways we we try to create a no wrong door so if they go to victim assistance and victim assistance works with us so closely and they say oh we know you could really benefit from some help from them we know when they come to us and say, I really want to prosecute, I want to go through this, we're saying we've got great community partners that can help you through that process, and they're experts at what they do. Having that safety net all around victims will ultimately mean we're going we're gonna to see those numbers go down. It won't be for a while, unfortunately. We're going to come to you next year and maybe have some similar kinds of conversations. But I, I couldn't do this work if I didn't believe that ultimately we can address it. It takes education, it takes all those supportive services, but, but ultimately we can have a community where there's very little domestic violence that happens and it takes everyone saying, you don't, you don't get to do that in our community, we're not gonna tolerate it here and how do we, how do we address that in a meaningful and um, supportive way? And, and we're on that road. Um, we're not there yet, but we're on that road. And that's exciting to be on that road because I'll tell you, when I first started doing this work about 25 years ago, we weren't very far on that road. And so I get really encouraged when I see the kinds of things that are happening in our community. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that, um, you know, even like just having a, a domestic, a, a prosecutors that are focused on domestic violence how, how many years have you been able to have that? And so we didn't have that before, and all those steps make a difference. I, hate, I get it, but it's strange <laughs> that it's getting better because it's getting worse. But in spite of that, we have the right team to deal with it, and I'm confident of that. So Chair Cameron, if I could, unless Walt, did you want to make another comment? Well, no one, no one can say it better than Jane, so I appreciate and, and um, her comments. But... Uh, in terms of successes, maybe next year we'll, uh, we kind of empower one uh, survivor at a time. And so uh, we have a lot of success stories. There are multiple contacts and visits and exchanges every day in both our programs. And on the other, on the other side of that is, uh, is success and uh, comfort and empowerment. 
And、uh, maybe we'll share that with you next year.、Right. Maybe just a few stories, because、um, nothing's more personal than a personal contact, and and、um, and we're seeing those every day. Well, if I might, Commissioner, actually I have one of those,、okay. and it actually has to do with your district attorney's office. And and、um, this was an amazing thing for me. I was sitting in court just a couple weeks ago when、um, a an abuser who had actually. Um, placed several women in great harm for many years and had gotten away with it time and time again. Was actually sentenced、um, to more than 29 years in prison, and that was thanks to the work of great、uh, deputy district attorneys who did an amazing job of building the case and working with that victim and victims' assistance, supporting that person and. And and our program being able to support that person, I have never seen that in my career. And so, to me, that sends a message to our community: it's not going to not going to happen in Marion County. And we're going to do everything we can to stop it, so that that person doesn't have the opportunity to do it to someone else. And 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 I came, I actually came back to my office and I pulled everyone together and I said, I want you to know what happened here because I think that's actually a record、um, for our community and. And that's because we don't always get to see those kind of outcomes, and that was to the incredible work that was done by、um, Walt and his team. And so you can be very proud of the work that they do here around this around this issue. Thank you. But before we get the motion, the other and, and then on the other end, and Jane, you and I were just talking about this on the way, and we had a presentation. Was it last week from the kids at South Salem about、mm -hmm. you know hands the, the hands and words are not for hurting and how they're. Getting the message out, and, and it was more focused on teen suicide, but just the problems that kids have, and having a friend to talk about those things. And so, you know, that's that's how we're going to change it from the bottom、uh, up, or actually in the top up, I guess, is when you look at our youth or the future leaders of our of our community. So, I mean, there's all those things that are working together that probably weren't here, you know, five, ten, fifteen years ago that will make a difference as we as we move forward. So,、um, it's pretty. Pretty exciting from that standpoint, and to, to hopefully prevent those types of things in the future、um, from being there.、So. Okay. Well, you want to? Okay, Chair Cameron, if I could, then I'd make a motion that we do approve a proclamation that designates the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Marion County. Second the motion. Okay, we have a motion second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And we will read the proclamation. Who wants to go first? I'd be、one? happy to.、Okay. In the matter of proclaiming October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, proclamation. Whereas the crime of domestic violence is not just a personal or family issue, but instead is an issue that belongs to and impacts our community as a whole. And whereas we know as individuals we can make a difference by speaking up and reaching out to help victims and survivors, and whereas 11 people in Marion County have been murdered in the past five years as a result of domestic violence, with eight of these involving the use of a firearm, and whereas the Marion County District Attorney's Office received 1,194 law enforcement reports of domestic violence last year, and. Whereas the Center for Hope and Safety received twenty thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven contacts to their program last year, and provided four thousand seven hundred and forty-six nights of shelter to two hundred and five individuals, with nearly one half of those sheltered being children, and whereas the Marion County Victim Assistance Division provided services to. 1,392 victims of domestic violence last year, supporting them in making choices for their safety and giving them a voice in the criminal justice process. Now, therefore, the board, the Marion County Board of Commissioners, proclaims October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and resolves to honor those who have died and acknowledge those who have survived by supporting meaningful services that create safety for survivors. In our community, dated this nineteenth day of October two thousand sixteen. Thank you.
And that completes our business for the day. I'll read the calendar. I almost want to take a moment of silence after reading that. Yes. You have a note. So today um, at 2 p.m., Willamette, Mid Willamette Homeless Initiative Support Services Education Subcommittee. Uh, location is here in the Silverton Conference Room in the fifth floor. Tomorrow, Thursday, October 20th at 8 a.m., City of Salem, Marion County meeting. Location is at the Sassy Onion, 1244 State Street in Salem. Tomorrow at 12 p.m., the 20th, Mid Willamette Homeless Initiative Transitional Housing Shelters Committee. Location, Salem Conference Room, first floor. First floor here in this building at 555 Court Street Northeast. Monday, October 24th at 8.30 a.m., calendar review here in the Silverton Conference Room on the fifth floor. Monday, the 24th at 9 a.m., management update, location in the Silverton Conference Room here on the fifth floor. Tuesday, October 25th at 7.30 a.m., the reentry breakfast location at Broadway Commons, 1300 Broadway Street, Northeast Salem. I know I have to be there because Senator Winters asked me for a ride yesterday. And I asked, is she on your way? And you said, no. Well, <laughs> the Senator's always on my way when yeah. she needs me. Right. And on October 25th, Tuesday, oh, I just read that one. October 25th, Tuesday at 10 a.m., Board of Commissioners, Chief Administrative Officer meeting, executive session if needed. Location here in the Silverton Conference Room on the fifth floor. Uh, Wednesday, October 26th, back here for our board session at 9 a.m. And Wednesday, October 26th at 2.30, Capital Community Television, uh, CCTV taping at the CCTV office at 575 Trade Street Northeast. Joe, you should read that one for me because you know where that is. Okay, so that completes our calendar. Anything about how the week has gone or last week since our board session? Any comments? Oh, the breakfast is coming together very nicely. So we're happy about that. Uh, the topic is housing this year. So this mm. whole issue on homelessness and how housing connects with uh, people who are trying to reintegrate into the community. Uh, so I've seen the videos. The videos are great. Uh, Paige Clarkson, our deputy district attorney, is going to be our keynote speaker. And we're going to have a couple surprise speakers also that it will be fun. We have 225, 26 people plus 10 staff people that aren't even included in that number that have signed up. And... Uh, we know there, well, we got a couple cancellations yesterday after I sent out the email, so, um, so that we, we know that there will be people whose plans have changed, but I think we're going to have a full house, I guess is what I'm going to say. So we made sure that it's going to be enough breakfast for 230. <laughs> Christy's been doing a great job trying to keep up with all of the back and forth on the, on the email list and the RSVP list. I really appreciate her work, and Kenna and Gordine does the centerpieces, and Tammy's office uh, does the, collects the sponsorships and uh, orders the catering and all that. I mean, it really is very much a Marion County team effort to get this done. So I'm um, going to be kind of glad when it's over because we've been working really hard on it. But at the same time, really looking forward to it because I think it's going to be a great event. Is this the eighth annual? It is the eighth annual that we're doing here. And then yesterday we had a retreat for the Willamette Valley Community Health Board of Directors, and I had the privilege of facilitating it. So we spent, yeah, we were up at the Oregon Garden Resort. We uh, had a couple good meals up there and uh, a lot of good nice conversation. About me there? Did you hear anything? About you? Yes. Is this all about you? Well, just there. <laughs> I didn't, well. I'm just kidding you, but I want to comment on your breakfast first because it's yeah. become such an important event. and, and uh, moving i can't say it different so 
I'll wait for the surprises, as long as it isn't Commissioner Cameron talking. Is that a surprise? No. Actually, well, it was, it's a person that replaced Commissioner Cameron, and he was gracious enough to say, I'll do whatever you need. So, Wonderful. Uh, we were going to have him be the closer. We'll, we'll call on you next year, maybe. But, uh, oh, I was, oh, that's right. I got kicked out. You he did like get that. kicked out. Been yeah. fired I was hired, years. and then I got fired. Yeah, I know. So. I felt really bad. But <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. No, it, it happened. Time to move on. No, I'll no, never no, forgive. No, no, seriously, what happened was the, uh, when I was doing the interviews over at the CCTV studios, one of the guys that has been in the video before as a client is now employed as a staff person. Oh. And his, the change was so, dramatic. I mean, just yeah. dramatic, yeah, yeah, that I went, wow, maybe he could be our closer. Because uh, here's a guy that's lived it, you know, and, uh, and been the feature in, in a couple of the videos before. So uh, tracked him down and sent him an email, and he said, I'm in. What do you need me to Wonderful. do? And so then I said to Kevin, any chance you might be willing to? <laughs> Step aside. Okay. Right? I've got plenty of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. You, in fact, the, I think the day I asked you was the day that you were the closer at the United Way lunch. And so I thought, well, you know, he's had a whole lot of time on stage, so he won't be too disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> we do get stale we, after a while. We, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I think... Uh, Think he's going to do a great job so it's going to be good for him he's so excited to have the chance to good. be part of it so a couple of things one and i commented at cog yesterday I, I thought that uh public hearing uh that we had on the bridge you know we have a decision to make i'm not quite sure when it is but the hearing itself just came off to me i was very impressed mm -hmm. you know the the materials we were presented the explanation that was given the way the meeting was run we got through a whole lot of information um and not where it was so onerous that i didn't care anymore and i, I really thought i'd get there <laughs> so pretty happy about that um i will be watching i'm not going to get into a whole bunch uh, this debate tonight is of interest to me i, I i'm not going to say much more except it's a mess that's all so on the third bridge, too, I thought it was interesting. I mean, actually really uh, important. I was tra I actually wrote down the names of each person and kind of put them on I the opposing too. and favoring side. And there were, it was only seven different between the, and I know there were people that left from, on both points of view because it ran until 10 o'clock at night. But... Uh, there, there's a group that's opposed to the third bridge, and they had a lot of representatives there. And then there were individuals who just came who were in favor of it that were people that live in West Salem. Uh, there, you know, there were a couple of organizations, sure. the chamber, the realtors, and that kind of thing that were organized. But so many people that came just to talk about their concerns. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, it's one thing for organized groups Get out I'll use members. Dan Clem as an example. I mean, he's the chamber director. He's there, and while it's great that he comes to an evening meeting, I mean, that's kind of part of his job, you know, to do that. It's another thing when citizens come and say, this is my concern, this is what uh, I care about. And I, I was just so impressed that people came out and sat that long and were willing to, for three minutes, opportunity to tell us things. So uh, it is, Anna was uh, expressed it there, but I just want to say it, it is so much a part of our, process that we have here in uh, uh, our great country that uh, we need people to be involved like that. So I was impressed and really heartened by that. Yeah, and our guests from Ukraine, they don't experience that. I was thinking yeah. of that too. Right. Yeah. They just don't experience that. And, and in some cases, we don't either because people, there's still people that don't realize that they can come and make a difference by speaking to their elected officials about how it impacts them so yeah um i was I, I i thought it went really well too except for one person that you know i thought should have been probably gaveled down what did i do <laughs> i'm not gonna make... I, well i know who you're talking about. yeah so uh, i thought oh, it went the, really one, well. the one hillary thing uh, yeah the name of the bridge and oh yeah, yeah yeah it was just that was just uncalled for um impugning people's motives for voting a certain way so um, i have one more thing tomorrow i have jury duty and i'm kind of hoping i get picked i'm curious <laughs> i've had You'll some never get picked. 
You don't think so? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I but, can be fair. I but would, we'll see. I've been wrong before, so we'll, right. see. we'll see. I've tell, told this story before, but I was mayor of sublimity, and uh, my sister was called for jury duty, and the question that she got asked is, your brother the mayor of sublimity? And she said yes, and uh, they just excused her. So like two weeks later, I get a summons for jury duty, and I'm thinking, well, if the sister of the, <laughs> of the mayor of sublimity doesn't have to go to jury duty or get called on, um, I'm pretty safe, but that wasn't the case. I got on grand jury. It was about a five-week deal at a bad time for me, so I don't understand the consistency at right. all. <laughs> well, Dale Penn, uh, our former district attorney, is pre retiring presiding judge, told a funny story when he was still the district attorney about how he got called. Oh, he got duty. called. Right, and so then he's sitting in the, you know, he sees the movie and he's sitting in the room and then he gets called in and then they're actually And like, he's the DA. And he's the DA, right, the sitting DA. And he's sitting now in the courtroom, and he's thinking to himself, any minute now, <laughs> one of my employees is going to come in. <laughs> and they finally said, all right, you know, you're excused. But, I mean, he, may, he continued going up the steps. He was, oh, I don't want to give he was just really kind tomorrow. of, uh, you know, I have these nice parking instructions. I already mentioned that to you, so that'll be nice. I, I probably should use them but, or, or yeah. use my own spot here. I, ser I served when you I was in the legislature. Oh, did and you? I, no, they wanted, and they, called see, you? they wanted to see me because they had me over to tour the courts and all that, and they called me and kept me on the jury. It was an afternoon jury. Uh, yeah, and then did you string them up. The, we did, but uh, the people in the room wanted me to be the, the foreman. One, the foreman, and really? I said, "No, I'm not going to be the foreman. <laughs> in this I'm not going to do it." So. Um, yeah, that you be you may be surprised. You we may be surprised. He they may say, oh, we want to. It depends on the case. We, yeah, we want to show the commissioner camera. I mean, commissioner, commissioner Brantano, what it really looks like to be on a jury. Exactly. I'm trying to think what like important reason I need to be here. To, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so I'll, one I'll, of the things I didn't share a management update on Monday. Um, what we discovered, EDAB, that. Years back, you probably will remember this. Um, uh, the county gave COG a substantial chunk of money for loans. Yes. Well, there's been no accountability for those loans, and um, so we're we're you know where did the money go? What happened? How many jobs? What what was it? So that system we're trying to get our hands around that. Well, I think and John Safestrom will have all that stuff exactly why well, I went there just for those reasons. That, well, that's what we want to know. Where you know, where is the you know, if you, if do you remember how much money was was it I don't a couple hundred thousand so, no, or something I, like that? 150,000. Was this, 000, was this before that. our time when Randy no. was there? No. No, no, this was during your that? time, I think. Really? Okay. Sarah's kind of looking into it. I said, "Yeah, we we like to have them come over and meet with us and just say where are we with the, these loans?" Uh, and how much do we still have, and how is it being administered, et cetera, just to get My bet idea. is you'll be surprised and pleased, but we'll see. Yeah. So uh, just wanted to let you know that we're Fine. trying to find out about that. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't mention it, management. I mentioned it briefly. We just didn't have any time at management update. Um, there, the Union Gospel Mission had its annual fundraising event in Kaiser on Friday night and invited the whole reentry initiative group to come, and so the whole group was honored. So uh, it was uh, the Sheriff's Office, Troy Clausen was there, District Attorney's Office, Paige was there, parole and probation, Kevin Carvandi, Anna were there, uh, myself uh, with Public Safety Council, and then they also honored the uh, Salem Police Department and the Kaiser Police Department, you know, it's law enforcement partners that they have. So anyway, it was really a great event, and it was, uh, it was really nice for uh, kind of in that setting where you're talking about, again, homelessness and all of that to recognize that public safety plays a role. And then also we're, we use the Union Gospel Mission services so much for our reentry initiative, particularly the Restoration House uh, over out in, in uh, North Salem and Samanka House for the women, um, and in some instances the men's shelter downtown. So um, all of that was, it was great. That was Friday night. Yeah. yeah. I do have one other. I have a 10 o'clock meeting on vector control. Are you not, is that not on your, this is just me? Oh, I'm the vector guy. You are. But I just wondered why it wasn't on the list. Okay. What's the vector control? That's, that's your spray? That's mosquitoes, yeah. Yeah, well, of course, it's, well, look of course it's you. You're the vector champion. Fine. Right. 
I'm the only one that cares is what I'm hearing. No. We care. All right. We care. We're behind you. All right. We're going to adjourn. <laughs>